Hey there everyone, Hadosh here from LearnCodeOnline.in. Make sure you visit the website, there is some amazing content there. So let's go ahead and talk about this arrow function. So we have seen that arrow function is latest, it's modern, it's amazing, it's short syntax, syntactic sugar is there. So you might be thinking, I should use arrow function all the time. No, my dear friend, no. It's not like everything that has came up as a new. It's awesome, it's amazing. Yes, it is, most of the time. But there are always limitations of something. It is not at all compulsory that if something is new, it's going to be amazing. It's it's not. There are chances it might be, so use it wherever you think it is going to be amazing. Otherwise, you can just leave that out. There is no such compulsion that you always have to use it. Yes, I would say there are advantages of arrow functions, but it's not like I use them all over the places. And I'm going to show you what are these places where arrow functions can make a mess and even sometimes they are not like favorable to use them. It depends on the use case, of course. So let's just get started and talk about all these things. I'm still in my arrow.js file and let's just have it. So uh, I have actually commented out all the console logs. You can also go ahead and do that so they don't bother us much. So what we're going to do, we're create we're going to create an object. So let's just have an object for the camera is lying on my desk. So let's have a camera. So cameras, oops. And uh, what does cameras have? Okay, cameras have price, of course, they're very pricey. Uh, this one is not so much. So I'm going to go for $600. That's easy. And uh, let's have a weight, probably 2000 grams is good. And I forgot to put a comma there. That's why it's complaining. Okay. And probably the camera has a description that I'm an amazing camera or uh, maybe have a brand. So let's just have a brand for this camera and probably a prize or something like that. So I'm going to call this as uh, simply let's have a description. And uh, I'm going to call this as my desk for description just like that. Now this is going to be a function which is going to say this is a Canon camera of price, whatever the price is. Price is going to be accessed from uh, the price in the properties, okay? So usually what we do is we create a function, we put a pair of parentheses, no big deal, have it like this. And in case you remember, we talked about it in this previous video, we use something like a return, return and use backticks. And we say something like uh, this, oops, this, uh, come on, this Canon, come on, Canon camera is off. And I'm going to say price in here. So just like that. And I'm going to use a dollar sign again. I uh, just like that. Or previously, I'm going to use, well, let's just use a dollar sign after you can use that previously as well. And in order to access the property, I was not able to say price like that. If I'm going to do it, just to remind your jog up your memory, this is going to give us an error. So let's just run this and clean the screen and run this. And uh, we forgot to just use it anywhere. So let's just get that error. So it's going to be log. And then we're going to say cameras dot my disk. There we go. So now we're going to get error. And there we go. And the error is simple. It says price is not defined. We have seen that error previously as well. And when I access this dot price, again, we are going to get result this time, no error. So there we go, $600. Okay. Now you might be thinking, hey, why we are using the functions? We have just learned about the arrow functions. Shouldn't we be using them? No, you should not be using arrow function in this particular use case. There can be different where you can use that. In this use case, you cannot. Let me walk you through why. So what is basically uh, arrow functions? How do you use them? Uh, you remove this function keyword. Got it. Uh, you use these arrow signs. Got it. No errors. No problem. It totally depends. You want to remove this or not. But what I want to show you is not dependent on these pair of, parent a pair of curly braces or return or anything. Remove them or not. Totally your choice. But now, since we have converted this function into an arrow function, this is going to give us an error. And this is a classic, classic beginner mistake. Don't do that, please. Uh, and it says the Canon camera is of undefined price. So what is this undefined here? Now, this one more thing about arrow functions is it doesn't do anything automatically for you. Now in JavaScript, the huge, huge problem was this keyword. This keyword was a nightmare in JavaScript. It just automatically binds it. Sometimes it's binds to the window object. Sometimes it's binds to the function itself. And there was no way to control it. 
obviously, uh, programmers used to hack around it, pass on the different functions and all of that. But now in the arrow functions, nothing is binded. Neither the arguments, neither the this. So they are completely free. Now comes up the important step. If you really want to use it uh, in this way that you'll be using for sure in the things like React or maybe others as well, then you have to explicitly bind this function. And this is a common syntax. Everybody does that in React. Right now, I cannot show you this, how you can bind that, because for that, I have to create a use case scenario that involves React, but probably in the future, we can do something in the upcoming videos. So make sure you hit the subscribe. That was smooth. Uh, but again, so please, please, please don't do this in here. Okay, so this is the worst case scenario where you can have uh, this kind of this statement and function. So please don't use that. Now, here's my couple of uh, word of sense that I wanted to give you that... Uh, Please never use arrow functions in methods and constructor. You cannot use them there. So, but again, there can be use case scenario, but most of the time people like to avoid them. Okay. Now, next two minutes is for only those people who do understand a little bit about Redux or takes interest that probably in future, I'm going to learn Redux somewhere. For rest of the people, you can just go off. That's it for this video. So, let me just walk you through for the Redux guys. Uh, there is one thing in Redux we do is returning back a lot of key value pairs and using the arrow function, you might want to do it. It's a great idea, but here is a, a word of caution. So we're gonna have something like a function here and this function, you might want to use something like pair of parentheses and then you might want to return that. And what we usually do is this kind of stuff where you have a key and you have probably a value, Va value, <laughs> there we go. And uh, if you will be doing something like this in Redux, it can get you in a little bit of trouble. Uh, so you will be getting an undefined in this case. So if you want to use that, make sure you wrap that up in a pair of parentheses. This sounds weird. Uh, I know this is a little bit weird stuff, but you'll be thanking me later on when you'll be learning the Redux. So just keep in mind somewhere in the side corner that if you're going into the Redux thing, and you are returning a key value pairs, which of course we do in Redux quite a lot. Uh, make sure you wrap that up in the pair of parentheses and don't just directly look for uh, these curly braces, okay? So this is, uh, I'm gonna put a comment and I'm gonna write a note here. Uh, this is only for Redux people. Okay, that's it. So this was all just one more thing about arrow functions. Um, I know it can be a little bit tricky from starting from here, but don't worry, everything will be smooth. I'll make sure everything goes like that, as smooth as possible. So that's it for this video. In case you have enjoyed, visit my website, learncodeonline.in. We do write regular blogs there as well, and amazing video contents as well. Subscribe to my channel, and I'm sure I'm gonna catch you up in the next video.